For the record, state your name and profession. John Manning, Jr., Doctor of Chiropractic. And what is your specialty? Applied kinesiology. How long have you been in practice? 35 years. And your purpose for meeting here today? To reveal the truth about applied kinesiology. You have something for us today? I do. There's a lot of confusion about applied kinesiology, lots of misinformation and so forth. I want to try to demystify a little bit of that for you today. But first, I've been just watching this Australian guy named Saunders debunking applied kinesiology. You know, despite the fact that nothing he's doing here remotely resembles applied kinesiology. Well, hold on. Let me give you a look. I thought I'd give you a little demonstration of what this applied kinesiology might look like. Ready? Yep. <laughs> Amazing. Much better. Amazing results. We'll try another test. Let's, Let's try it. another. Nevertheless, he still has about 300,000 views on this thing. So it got me to thinking, I'd like some more views on my videos too. I think I'm going to get into some debunking. In fact, I've come into possession of some hidden camera footage that's going to blow the lid off the plumbing industry. Let me give you a little sample of what's coming up in my next video. I got it! <laughs> yeah, okay, nonsense, right? Yes, all of it. The last group you want to be seeing walking into your front door with pipe wrenches is probably the Three Stooges. And by the same token, this charlatan Saunders is no one I want to be talking to about analyzing applied kinesiology or demonstrating it. But as an applied kinesiology practicing chiropractor for three and a half decades, I'm going to be the first to tell you that much of the stuff I see on YouTube purporting to be applied kinesiology work is really difficult to watch and embarrassing, plainly wrong. So what I'd like to try to do today a little bit is to demystify at least one foundational part of applied kinesiology for us, and that is manual muscle testing as a window into the nervous system. I'm sure you've seen folks demonstrating various muscle testing techniques, one of which, which is foundational to the chiropractic world in AK, is the identification of dysfunctional joint mechanics usually in the spine, but other articulations well. The extremities, the hands, the wrists, the elbows, shoulders, etc. cetera. Um, So-called subluxations. I don't really like the term as much as dysfunctional motor unit or joint complex dysfunction. I think it's a little bit more descriptive of what's really going on neurologically. And I want to make clear that there is a distinction between applied kinesiology and generalized muscle testing. There are lots of folks out there doing muscle testing techniques that are very good. However, they're not licensed practitioners of applied kinesiology. I think there are roughly 500 doctors, mostly chiropractors in the United States, who are certified by the International College of Applied Kinesiology to use the term professional applied kinesiologist. Today's video is specifically aimed at the real neurology of what's going on with that work. And literally in the end, I'll be footnoting links to almost a hundred studies, peer-reviewed journals, scientific papers, and indisputable anatomy and physiology. So off we go. Here is a model of the human spine, a column of 24 movable bones called vertebrae. They're separated by spacers called discs or intervertebral discs. Atop this column sits the brain, which is encased in the skull, in itself 22 bones, actually. But we need to understand something critical that we're not aware of in general, and that is that there is a two-way communication. Obviously, information from brain down and out, 
But guess what? There's a heck of a lot more information going up the spine to the brain with feedback information from every tissue, every cell in the body. Muscles, glands, tendons, organs, blood vessels, eyes, ears, nose. Everything is sending what's called sensory information to the brain. The brain decodes that a split second all day long, makes decisions on what it needs to do, and moves on. That conversation going on from the brain to all of our tissues is absolutely critical to healthy physiology. Literally, we could not breathe or move without that two-way communication. There's a lot more information traveling to the brain than from it. For our purposes today, we'll be talking about nerves that are sending information to the brain from a couple of specific points. The joints, the discs, the muscles, and the skin. When there's proper function, uh, motion segments in the joints, motion segments in the spine, proper functioning of muscles as they go through their lengthenings and shortenings, these particular receptors are fully functioning and sending the brain accurate information about what's happening. When joints aren't moving through ranges of motion like they should, the information is not clear. This is the critical key to manual muscle testing and its ability to detect aberrant motion in joints. When there is dysfunction in a joint, either hypermobility, hypomobility, immobility, and I walk my way up the spine, for instance, and rotate these segments right, left, up, down, forward, back, if we happen to run into a joint that is moving poorly and one of the directions we challenge into makes it worse, we're going to get an inhibition immediately of a previously strong muscle. Why? Because those sensory receptors, which are already compromised by the lack of joint function, are made even worse. They tell the brain, hey brain, better check me out. It's much more important that we determine what the story is down in this problem joint area than this particular muscle test that you're performing now. The brain is almost short-circuited, if you will, to spend much more attention at that joint in question that's being challenged. And consequently, a previously strong muscle we've been testing temporarily drops away and weakens. So I broke out my trusty whiteboard. Love this thing. Let's go to it. Okay, we're back at a different angle. Hope this works out better. Here's sort of a quick visual for us. Information coming from the brain down the spinal cord and out to all of the muscles, glands, tendons, organs, etc. is called the motor side of the nervous system, otherwise known as efferent. On the other side of the balance beam, we have information traveling to the brain up the spinal cord. That's called the sensory side of the nervous system, or the afferent side. Efferent down, afferent up. So let's talk quickly about the key sensory feedback information. Mechanical receptors, nociceptors. Both of these information pathways send information to every part of the brain. In fact, the input from mechanoreceptors is largely sent to a portion of the brain that affects voluntary muscle motion. When there's dysfunction in these joints and mechanical receptor information is diminished, the information to the brain in those sections is diminished as well. At the same time, nociceptor information is increased. Nociceptors are pain receptors. When there's imbalance in that input to the brain, there's imbalance in output. This is the absolute key to the manual muscle test challenge of vertebrae. Mechanical receptors are located in four distinct areas in the body. The discs, the muscles, the skin, and the joints. All of these areas are constantly sending information to the brain. So remember, vertebral joints are richly endowed with mechanoreceptors and nociceptors. 
Joint complex dysfunction always alters afferent input to the brain, and with abnormal afferentation to the brain, the cortex cannot properly modulate motor control. When there's disruption in any of the information flow from these joints, there is always aberrant motor activity as a result. So with that, let's hyperspace over to my office where we'll do some muscle testing on an actual patient and show you what this thing's all about. I'm here quickly with my friend and patient, Brad. He uh, was just in here last week and adjusted, so he's pretty straight away. But the first thing I'm going to do is give us a quick screen of systems and mechanical feedback stuff. So I'm going to challenge his pelvis in a couple different ways, as we talked about earlier. Oh, we got to L5, 4, 3. Let's turn you around, Brad. As we showed earlier, if I challenge segments right or left, up or down, front or back, one way or another, and we happen to find a segment that is moving aberrantly, and we stress that joint into a direction of greater dysfunction, the mechanical receptor feedback to the brain overloads that system to the point where the brain directs attention there and away from a strong muscle. It's very clear today. Sacrum, Front, back, side, side, right, left, good. But when I get to lumbar five and push to the right, he blows out. To the left, solid as a rock, all the way up there. But five, four, three. Excellent. Any faking with that, Brad? No, sir. 100% <laughs> <All right>. legit. <laughs> all right, let's go face down for a sec. Okay, so here we are with Brad again, face down. We're going to do the same thing, show you from a different angle. Sacrum, posterior, anterior. Nope. Right down, left down, no, L5, push to the left, hold, solid, to the right, off, four, three, and two is solid. Beautiful. And let's try any other strong muscle, shall we? We'll take a hamstring here. Don't let me push down, Brad. That's very, very solid. If I go in and I challenge that lumbar five again and hold, he blows right out. Are you trying hard, Brad? Try as hard as I can. Okay. So again, receptor feedback, overload, uh, more attention drawn to that problem area that's screaming at the brain, away from the muscle in question. Very temporary, two or three seconds. Okay, back again to wrap this thing up. The big picture really is that there's an awful lot of information going to the brain, up the spinal cord from receptors everywhere around the body, any alteration of that sensory feedback to the brain always results in some aberrant outgoing information from the brain. So big key to chiropractic, of course, would be to keep communication lines opening. The more free-flowing information from the brain and to the brain, uh, the better the physiology can work. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Drop me a note. I will be happy to answer if I can. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Thanks very much. And consider subscribing if you'd like to see some more. So until we see you again, as always, this is Dr. J, yours in vibrant health. Thanks very much.